Hey everyone, how's it going? So since our Ghastly video, we haven't really had any Pokemon come close to the top tiers. And some of you have been suggesting that I pick a Pokemon that at least has a chance of doing that. And one Pokemon that I kept seeing again and again and again is Poliwag. And I can understand why you'd think Poliwag would be really good. It has a pretty good move pool. It's going to learn both Hypnosis and Amnesia, which is insane. So perhaps Poliwag will be the best Pokemon, but it gets off to a really awful start. You see, Poliwag, for better or for worse, only knows Bubble, and that will help against Brock, but it's really bad to fight the first rival. Now, yes, the way the code works, I could make the rival pick Charmander, but that feels like against the spirit of the game. And if the rival does pick Bulbasaur, which is the strongest starter against the water type, you can't win, I mean, theoretically you can, but I don't feel like resetting my game, what, 20 to 100 times till I get enough luck to beat him? It would require a ton of critical hits and the rival using Growl an inordinate amount of times. And while losing the first fight doesn't seem like it would be that big a deal, it actually sets you back quite a bit since experience points are very valuable. Now recall that with Ghastly, we are able to get through the game with the minimum number of battles, minus catching some Pokemon for HM. If Poliwag is going to be in that same tier, it's going to need to be able to do the exact same thing. And that means after losing the rival fight, we only have one battle, the battle with the Bug Catcher, until we get to Brock. Now the Bug Catcher isn't too bad, but Brock is not an automatic victory. Why? Well, taking a look at the unsuccessful battle, Geodude isn't too big a problem, but you might notice Bubble isn't doing that much damage. It's only base 20 power, and Poliwag does not have exceptional special, unlike Ghastly. When it comes to Onyx, I actually lost because the Onyx used Bide, Bubble took too many hits, and Bide, which could last 2 or 3 turns, lasted 2 turns, resulting in me fainting. So, I tried again, and of course I did win. He did use Bide again, which made it close, but I got some good luck since I got a crit. Admittedly, it's kind of bad luck that he kept using Bide, but this fight is actually a pretty good indicator that the early game is not going to be easy with Poliwag. We will get Water Gun soon, but we have four more trainers to defeat. First one I had no problem, but the youngster with the Rattata and Ekans, I had to reset like six times and ended up having to use Bide to get by because it was just taking way too many hits with Bubble. The Rattata was simply doing too much damage because again, unlike Ghastly, which cannot be hit by normal moves, Poliwag is pretty not great defense and it can be hit by normal moves. So this section of the game was actually quite a bit frustrating. Even with introducing Bide strategy, it still wasn't an automatic victory and I was seriously considering abandoning minimum battles. I mean, I don't like having to reset over and over again, but since I won before my arbitrary cutoff point, I decided I would stick with it. And once I got past the trainers on Route 2, Mount Moon isn't too bad because you get Water Gun, and the two trainers in Mount Moon, not too bad. But then we get to the rival, and now that I'm at level 16, I have access to Hypnosis, and Hypnosis is a partial game changer. You see, Hypnosis is great because Sleep is insanely overpowered in Generation 1. It lasts between 1 and 7 turns, and the Pokemon cannot attack the turn they wake up. So if you outspeed, even if they wake up right away, you can just use another Hypnosis. So, that's good. The bad thing is, it only hits 60% of the time, so relying on Hypnosis to defeat a lot of the upcoming trainers, which is what we're going to do to defeat the rival, it introduces a whole lot of luck, because not only is it luck whether Hypnosis hits, but it's luck how long it lasts. Plus, there's already the inherent luck of getting critical hits. And so, it took me a few times to defeat the rival. I knew it was possible. You put the Pidgeotto to sleep, you put the Rattata to sleep, and you put the Bulbasaur to sleep, with Bulbasaur and Pidgeotto being more important. Rattata also missed with the Hyper Fang in this battle, which was pretty big, but... Basically, it's way more luck than I'd usually like, and I don't love to rely on lucky strategies per se, but I am very curious to see if hypnosis can work, because at the end of the day, the only real rule I have that eliminates luck is the Elite Four, and that's why that rule is in place, right? 
If you want to use luck to get through the game, which I'm kind of doing now, be my guest. Me, I guess. But when it comes to Elite Four, if you don't have a consistent strategy, it's not going to work. So we are going to use Hypnosis Strats going forward. It's going to help us out against the Oddish Trainer. Grass Pokemon are a big problem. So a lot of people recommend Water Pokemon as possibly being better than Ghastly. The biggest problem are Grass Pokemon since they both resist water and they have super effective moves. Compare that to Electric Pokemon who just are super effective against us but we hit for normal damage. That double whammy, especially considering there's a lot of really powerful Grass Pokemon early on, that's part of the reason I was skeptical Poliwag could even do this. But for now, it was kind of sort of working. I mean, definitely I was spending more time than I did on Ghastly, but not by a huge margin. Anyway, after getting the SS ticket, I decided to skip Misty since I don't have a move to hit her with. And here's where minimum battles again. This is a legitimate question because it would take time to go and battle that extra trainer in the SSN to get Body Slam, but Body Slam would really help us. It is a move Poliwag learns via level up, but spoiler alert, by that time, it's kind of useless. I think I use it all of two or three times in the entire run. Getting it here would have been super helpful and I think would have saved a little bit of time at the cost of, you know, an arbitrary sub challenge. So that's something to consider and why I also say these aren't scientific because I'm going to be honest, after now what, this is the ninth challenge? I like things like this, it keeps it interesting for me. And don't worry, I'll factor it into the tier list in the end, it won't affect the rankings. But anyway, we're going to now battle rival number three. And rival three is definitely a little bit more tricky because you now have four Pokemon to worry about instead of just three. And honestly, this is probably one of the luckier battles I've ever had. I mean, Pidgeotto, I hit with the first Hypnosis. Yes, it hits me with Quick Attack first, but it stays asleep. Same thing with Eradicate. Even with a Potion, it stays asleep. The Kadabra is the first one to actually wake up, although the Hypnosis did hit. But after waiting a turn, I decided to use it again, and that's now four Hypnosis in a row that have hit. The odds of that are just under 13%. And we're not done getting good luck yet because after learning Double Slap as I level up, I hit again with Hypnosis. So I didn't miss five consecutive times with Hypnosis, which is only a one in 13 chance of happening. That's pretty absurdly unlikely. And truth be told, I didn't need to hit every single one. I could have missed one or two and still won, but then we factor in that three of the four Pokemon stayed asleep until I was ready to knock them out. Crazy good luck in this fight. But truth of the matter is, I think I may have won anyway. The Ivysaur is where the luck was integral, but missing a few times to the Pidgeotto, the Raticate, or even the Kadabra wouldn't have been the end of the world. I do have somewhat decent health. The Ivysaur with Vine Whip is a little more concerning, but hey, we did it. We're still at minimum battles, and we have cut. But... That doesn't mean we're going to go cut down the tree and fight Lieutenant Surge because we will not win. We're probably going to get outsped by the Raichu anyway. So let's go back to Cerulean and fight Misty. Misty is... it's hard to say really. I beat her on my first try. I use Hypnosis because why not? And one thing you'll notice with the Staryu is when Double Slap critical hits, every single hit is a critical hit. That isn't the case in later generations. With Starmie, I miss two straight Hypnosis, but... The AI, I don't think, will use Bubble Beam, which would have done more damage, so was able to put it to sleep. She does use an X Defend, which is one of the worst things that could have happened, but I get another crit, and for those of you thinking I'm getting just lucky, not necessarily. With Poliwag's 90 base speed, that's around an 18% chance of happening, so getting critical hits is pretty expected, to be perfectly honest. And while I got unlucky with two straight Hypnosis misses, the Starmie stays asleep for quite a long time, and uh, that's it for Misty. So, not really sure what to say. The big thing is now that I've defeated her, we can replace Water Gun with Bubble Beam. And that actually helps us out not as much as you'd think, because our special's kind of low, and one of the hardest trainers is the one just outside of Cerulean City, the junior trainer with the two Oddish and two Bellsprout. So we're going to have to use Hypnosis and Double Slap. This is the last trainer I had to reset against again and again. Because after we get by her, 
we can get through Mount Moon. Mount Moon, aside from the slow poke, which I did need to reset once, but that isn't a gain and again, it's only one again. I'm then able to get to Celadon. And a consistent theme in these runs is once you get to Celadon, a lot of different options open up. And for Poliwag, that includes getting access to a bunch of TMs, including Ice Beam and Psychic. Funny enough, I don't use Ice Beam the entire run. There's a pretty decent reason for this. In the end, I'm only going to have room for two attacking moves because I'm going to teach Amnesia once I learn it via level up, and I'm going to keep Hypnosis because it's just really useful. And so that leaves room for Surf, which is also water type, so it's a must-have, even though I don't have it right now. And Psychic or Ice Beam, and Psychic just has better coverage, plus that 33% chance of lowering special. I got Ice Beam just in case, but ended up never using it a single time. I always thought there may be a time where I'd want it over Psychic, but nope, never found an opportunity for that. Anyway, now that we have Psychic, let's go and fight the Rocket Hideout. They're really not too bad. The one thing that is annoying though, is usually once I have Psychic, everything's a one-hit KO. That was not the case here. There were quite a few Pokemon I needed a second hit. Giovanni also was a little scary because of Kangaskhan. I knew both Rhyhorn and Onyx would be one-hit KOs with Bubble Beam, but Kangaskhan got a critical hit with Bite. I wish it would have used Rage, which it can use. So I decided to throw a Hail Mary and go for Hypnosis. It hit. I just needed it to work for two turns, which it did. It woke up on the second turn, but it can't attack. So I was able to use that third Bubble Beam and beat Giovanni. But we're about halfway through with pretty decent moves, and I think it's pretty apparent that while we're sticking to minimum battles and doing okay, it's not nearly as consistent or frankly easy as Ghastly. But finally, after Giovanni, the game starts getting a little easier. Take a look at this rival fight. I'm not even really doing anything consistently. Like you can see against, especially once I get rid of the Pidgeotto, once I fight the Gyarados, I'm trying to see does Psychic do more damage or Body Slam. I also don't resort to using Hypnosis, Body Slam does one-hit KO the Kadabra, and against the Ivysaur, Psychic is not a one-hit KO, but I get that 33% special drop, so Vine Whip doesn't knock me out, which was pretty lucky. I did actually end up making a mistake, and I reset and had to do this battle over again, where I did use Hypnosis, and if you do, the battle is even more consistent, but the fact of the matter is, in the early game, there were fights where the quote-unquote consistent strategy required resets, and now... I'm able to win twice on my first try using kind of different strategies. So that goes to show you that Poliwag is getting a little bit better, but it's still not fantastic. We still have to wait until we get Amnesia to truly see Poliwag dominate. But after we're done with Pokemon Tower, we can then go and fight a gym leader, right? Wrong, because now that we have access to the Poke Flute, we can go to Fuchsia City and we can head right to the Safari Zone and get Surf. Because having a same type move, one of the most powerful same type moves, is going to make a bunch of battles a whole lot easier. A great example of this is Lieutenant Surge. What? Lieutenant? Yes, I have gotten comments from my fellow Canadians that I pronounced that wrong. And I don't know. To me, I say Lieutenant because I first heard it in Star Trek. I know that's kind of sad. But they say Lieutenant, because in America they say Lieutenant. I believe it comes from French, where it's also Lieutenant. But when translated to English, for whatever reason, they said Lieutenant. And the British say Lieutenant, and Canada likes to do what Britain does. So Canada also says Lieutenant. And there is your totally random, useless factoid of the week. Anyway, Lieutenant Surge is really easy. I did get hit with a critical hit Thunder Shock from Raichu but that's about just a little bit less than a regular Thunderbolt, meaning I would have survived on a little bit of health if Thunderbolt wasn't a critical hit, but yeah, considering he's the third gym leader and how high a level I am, a little bit more difficult than I'd like, but first try victories, can't complain. After we defeated him, I had to think about where I wanted to go next. Koga and Erika are both gonna be a little difficult because we don't have amnesia yet, but in the case of Erica, Amnesia actually wouldn't help that much since Critical Hit Razor Leaf, which, if you recall my Magikarp run from a couple years ago, it will get a critical hit every single time. 
and that ignores my special gains. So, might as well just go for Hypnosis Strats against Erica, and then fight Koga with Amnesia, and that's exactly what I do. If you miss with Hypnosis, the battle is over because it's a critical hit. There's really nothing you can do about that, but there is a 60% chance it does hit, and once you get past the Victory Bell, Tangela is not a one-hit KO because I don't have Ice Beam. I still need Psychic. I can't erase it since TMs are one-time use. And Vile Plume, you will survive a single Petal Dance or potentially, depending on your HP, two Mega Drains. So Vile Plume isn't that big of a problem, of course, if it doesn't get a crit. And you just need to use Hypnosis and hit it with Psychic until it decides it's done. And if you've defeated all the other mandatory trainers, including the two trainers in Koga's gym and the rocket in self company, you will have just enough experience points to get to level 38 and you will get amnesia. And once we have amnesia plus hypnosis, this run just becomes a complete breeze. I actually had fought Koga several times and lost trying to figure out a strategy. And once you get amnesia, you don't really need much of a strategy. I actually get pretty unlucky. The coughing hits with sludge and it gets a poison. And yeah, I opted not to set up hypnosis because you don't need to. After two amnesias, every single Pokemon is a one hit KO. And that's gonna become a very recurring theme. Amnesia boosts your special by two stages, which is why people kept suggesting Poliwag. Boosting your special by six stages turns almost, not every, but almost every Pokemon the rest of the way into a one-hit KO if we're able to set up those amnesias. And because we have Hypnosis, there is a pretty decent chance we're gonna have the opportunity even if we miss, because so long as the other Pokemon doesn't knock us out in one hit, we can try Hypnosis as many times as we want, use Amnesia, and since we're not relying on the badge boost glitch, we don't have to worry about manipulating our experience points. We can't even really do that much anyway since we're sticking to minimum battles. And rather than talk in abstract, let's look at Rival Fiebel and I'll show you just how overpowered this can be. Now Pidgeot doesn't have strong attacks, but it does have sand attack, so I put it to sleep. Unfortunately, it wakes up fairly quickly and does use sand attack. Still, I'm able to set up all three amnesias, knock out the Pidgeot. Gyarados still has pretty good special, and you can see it's a two-hit KO. It hits me a few times, but I'm still alright. Growlithe is a one-hit KO. Even Alakazam is a one-hit KO, but unfortunately I get a critical hit against Venusaur. Thankfully it uses Vine Whip and not Razor Leaf, which would have been an automatic critical hit and would have won. Vine Whip does almost nothing because in Generation 1, Special is both offensive and defensive, making Amnesia just so totally cheap. And thus, Rival Fievel, as soon as I get Amnesia, easy, honestly. I mean, quite a bit went wrong there, and I still was relatively okay. And I keep saying how I'm gonna skip Giovanni. We're finally gonna do it. I'm not gonna talk about, maybe I'm showing in the background right now, but there's nothing really to say. An exact same strategy can be used against Giovanni. Sabrina, on the other hand, I was a little worried about, so I decided to fight Blaine first. It turns out it wouldn't really matter. Blaine is exactly as easy as you'd expect. I'm sure I didn't need to, but I set up all three amnesias. I had just four surfs left because I hadn't even healed since I knew Blaine would be a joke. Poliwag is fast enough that it outspeeds every single one of Blaine's Pokemon, although the badge boost glitch may have helped, I'm not exactly sure. And we're able to defeat Blaine very easily. And now let's go see if Sabrina would be all that difficult. And the answer is she is more difficult than Blaine because if you get hit by a Psychic early on and don't put the Cadaver to sleep, it can knock you out. Our special still isn't very good without Amnesia. Funny enough, in the successful battle, I misclick. Sometimes I'm thinking ahead and not paying attention. And rather than using Amnesia or Hypnosis, I'm not actually sure which one I meant to go for, but I did neither. Then it disabled Hypnosis, making the decision just to go for Amnesia easier. Sometimes it's not even worth setting up a Hypnosis. It just can waste a turn if you miss and you could be fine without it. So probably going forward, that's the strat. Anyway, every single one of her other Pokemon is a one-hit KO if you don't get a critical hit. And truth be told, the extra speed from the badge boost glitch may be helping us outspeed Alakazam, but who cares? Another, well, actually this one wasn't so easy. It took like three or four tries, but relatively easy victory. And now we just have one more gym leader left, Giovanni, 
who is unbelievably easy. We don't even have to set up multiple amnesias, just one will do. And another thing that was cool is that we outsped the Dugtrio without the badge boost glitch since it resets once you level up, which we did. And Dugtrio's speed looks a lot higher, but every time you knock out Pokemon, you gain some stat experience, which can make your Pokemon way better than opponent Pokemon, which never gets stat experience. So that's why I'm outspeeding Dugtrio, but yeah, Surf one hit KOs everything. We beat Giovanni again, but like always, we're getting to the most difficult section of the run. We haven't used our rare candies yet. Will we need them for rival number six? No. Rival number six is pretty much the exact same thing as rival Fival. I put Pidgeot to sleep because why not? And it woke up very quickly. It attacks me, whatever. It also uses agility, which it has instead of sand attack. I'm able to set up all three of my amnesias. Surf takes out the Pidgeot. Rhyhorn obviously is going to be a one-hit KO without Amnesias. Now, I don't think Psychic would have been a one-hit KO. We get a critical hit, so we'll never know, but it is a two-hit KO, even with that really bad critical hit. Growlithe is also a one-hit KO, and we level up, so the badge boost glitch, not in effect. Alakazam outspeeds us, goes for a Fleck, not a big deal, one-hit KO, and Venusaur is a one-hit KO. I was worried about that, since Venusaur does have Razor Leaf, but if it's a one-hit KO, it can't use that, and... We're gonna move on to the Elite Four. We're still at minimum battles, but obviously the truest test of whether this works is whether we can defeat five of the toughest trainers in a row without saving and trying each one over and over again. And the truth was I was having a bit of difficulty until I figured out a better way of doing it. So first things first, we are gonna use rare candies, but not all of them. We're only gonna use seven of our eight rare candies. There are eight you will pick up along the way without fighting any trainers. And there's a specific reason we're not gonna use the eighth, which I'll talk about in just a second, but we're going to cue that ice theme once again and fight Laurely. Now, funny enough, Laurely actually is the trolliest member of the Elite Four. I'm not gonna put Dugong to sleep because the worst it can do is take down, which it never likes to use. I'm just gonna set up three amnesias, but you might notice I'm not one-hit KOing the Dugong, nor the Cloyster, but I did get a critical hit, but it wouldn't have been anyway, or the Slowbro, and all this gives Pokemon time to attack me. Unfortunately, I get an unlucky critical hit against the Jinx, which allows it to use Thrash, but that's not a big deal. But what's a much bigger deal is I don't one-hit KO the Lapras, not even close. It hits me with Confuse Ray. I've lost because of this before, Thankfully, I don't hit myself in confusion. With that special drop, Lapras isn't super scary, but nonetheless, Laurelie should be easy, but due to our bad special, she's a little more annoying than you'd otherwise expect. As for Bruno, he is exactly as easy as you would expect. Now, I'm pretty sure everything would have been a one-hit KO without any amnesias, but Machamp actually is good enough special that it requires two. So we're gonna set up those two against the first Onyx, then sweep through Bruno's entire team without any problems whatsoever. Of course, unless you get a critical hit against the Machamp, which is the equivalent of using one Amnesia. So that was fun, but we won anyway. Hooray. But if Bruno is looking for a moral victory, I had to use the D-pad in addition to hitting the A button. So it was a slightly more difficult strategy. Don't worry, Bruno, you are slightly less terrible in yellow version, which I will not be playing, but he is slightly better. Anyway, Agatha is pretty easy if you don't miss the first hypnosis or basically if you don't get put to sleep yourself. If that happens, you can just set up three amnesias and her team is done. I don't even think critical hits matter. I think a non-amnesia critical hit psychic would one-shot her Pokemon. I didn't get any, so I can't verify that, but so far, so good. And this is where I was starting to have problems. Lance actually is kind of difficult. And so we're going to do a couple things. We're going to get rid of Psychic. I know it was so good for us, but Blizzard, which you pick up in the Pokemon Mansion, that's going to be the move we use. It has 90 base accuracy and a lot more powerful than Ice Beam. And we're going to use the Rare Candy here so we don't level up in the middle of Lance's fight, which would happen and it would annoy me because we would not outspeed the Aerodactyl, which we need to do. Anyways, talking about the battle itself, we want to put Gyarados to sleep. Hyper Beam is scary. Don't want to see that. Thankfully, it's more likely to hit than not, just barely, and we get first turn hypnosis. I'm only able to set up one amnesia before he wakes up, and I'm pretty scared, so I'm going to use a second hypnosis, and it hits again. 
kind of trying my luck with that rather than just going for amnesia again, but Hyper Beam is really scary. Now, I've set up my other two amnesias and you'd think Blizzard would be a one-hit KO, but it's not. It survives on just a little bit of health. Usually Lance will heal here, so I go for Surf, but he doesn't. I'm not really sure why, but I have no problem with that. Now, Blizzard does have a 10% chance of missing, and I have been hit by Hyper Beam by these Dragonair. Doesn't happen in this match, but the scariest thing is will I outspeed the Aerodactyl? Thankfully, I do. Aerodactyl can critical hit quite frequently, and with takedown, that can be a one-hit KO. So very important, we keep the badge boost glitch active, which gives us speed every time you modify our stats, and surf one-hit KOs, which it would anyway. And then we can use Blizzard on Dragonite, which is an obvious one-hit KO. That went pretty well. I mean, truth be told, we definitely have a little bit of a buffer. Lance's Pokemon are fast, so they get critical hits, and that's when they can one-hit KO me. But truth be told, the ability to use both Amnesia and Hypnosis, I think it's very clear, is very powerful. And there's no better example of that than in the final battle. Will this strategy be enough to defeat the champion? Well, I never upload runs which I lose, so you know the answer is yes. But I don't know, I kind of feel like I need to fake hype it up because it's the final battle, but it's actually really easy. The scariest move Pidgeot can use is Sky Attack. So even if I missed with my first Hypnosis, which I didn't, it wouldn't be too big a deal. Unfortunately, just like Gyarados, it wakes up very quickly after just one Amnesia, but I get another first turn Hypnosis. Not a big deal if I didn't because Sky Attack takes two turns, but it does stay asleep, allows me to set up the rest of my Amnesias, and Blizzard one hit KOs it, obviously. Now thanks to the extra speed from the Badge Boost glitch, I know I have to talk about it in every run, but it does matter. I'm able to outspeed the Alakazam, and it's a one hit KO with Surf. That's pretty good. Then comes out the Rhydon. Bye, Rhydon. Yep, that was very scary. Now, I wasn't sure if Gyarados would be a one-hit KO. I decided to chance and just went for Blizzard. If he used Hyper Beam, unless he got a crit, I would survive, but he goes for Leer, so that's easy. And now we should be good as long as we don't get a crit, which we do against Arcanon, but it uses Leer, so just have to use Surf one more time. Now I just need that 10% non-miss. Ugh, Razor Leaf. Oh, okay, it missed too. And uh, I win. All right, that was a little scary. There was a 1 in 3 chance that he picked Razor Leaf, which would have been a 1 hit KO because it would have critical hit, since it always does, and he could have gone for Mega Drain or Solar Beam, either of which would have been perfectly fine since I still have my special increase. But yeah, that's another run in the books at minimum battles. But does that mean Poliwag deserves to be in the same tier as Ghastly? I don't think so. There's a couple reasons. One, there was way more reliance on luck. Getting Hypnosis at the right time, that Razor Leaf miss at the end, I mean, sure, all Pokemon runs are gonna have a little bit of luck involved, but especially at the beginning, there were a lot of battles that had to keep resetting, and the truth is, if I were doing this again, I think I might have been able to save five or so in-game minutes by not sticking to minimum battles. I just did so because, like I said, it's kind of fun to combine these two, and it's interesting to me. And I realize I beat the game at a lower level, level 60 versus 61, but the truth is, Poliwag was not nearly as good as Ghastly. And I had to really think about, do I put it in the Bulbasaur tier? Do I put it in the Ghastly tier? Or do I make the logical decision and put it in its own tier? Because it's a good Pokemon. The way it was able to get through that second half of the game is way better than anything Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and the rest of them could do. But it never had as easy a time and had way more obstacles than Ghastly. So to go by fighting tier ranks, Ghastly would be S tier, and Poliwag will be A tier. And so you guys were definitely right. Poliwag is a great Pokemon, but I don't know. I'm not sure any other pre-evolved Pokemon will have a chance of beating Ghastly, but that's why we're doing these. Let's see. And I'm going to get back to work. I have a couple other videos that I've delayed to make sure this one came out on time. So thank you for watching. See you in a few days. Take care.